Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Guild Wars 1 Let's Play. We are here in Tarnished Haven to continue our Acern side questing. What news? You know what to say? Over here with the chickies. The stories of your god Cormier fascinate me the most. To think that a mortal human no less could transcend is something even greater. Was it part of the Eternal Alchemy? Was it some hidden design that preordained it would happen that way? Or does the power exist that can go against the schemes of fate? These questions run me as sharp as a cloud. This is it. Only her cipher remains. Take the divination, go to Ari Bay, and the fastest of the spirit will be there. If you come this far, we'll see it through. Haven't I done enough already? Yeah, let's go find her. Let's go <clears throat> find this spirit. I believe this is um ba -ba -ba. is this pain inverter? Yeah, this is pain inverter. This is a pretty good skill for some content. We'll talk a little bit, a little bit about the skill whenever we get it. All right. Oh, and we got the good spawn right off the back thing. Press Jibus. <clears throat> Yo. There we go. So if I remember correctly, I believe this one is down by the waterfall with the spawn. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> I actually did this quest pretty recently to semi-prepare for this, and semi just because I wanted to get it done on a character, and I think I had the same spawn. It's, yeah, it's right here. Defeat fast of the spirit. It's weird that it's a dervish, not a paragon. I just realized that. It's a dervish for some reason. I feel like it should be a paragon. Because Corb Cormier was a paragon. But whatever. Whatever. Inconceivable, I suspect it as much, but to actually be proven right, the ciphers of these signatures, to put simply human terms, are giving us coordinates. There's a place we must go, answers must be there. Pain inverter, okay. This is a cool hex for 8 seconds every time it deals damage. It takes a percent of that damage with a max. It's a pretty cool ability. It could be used versus, like, people who do, like, multi-wave hits that hit your entire party in certain hard content. It's a great way to nuke, um them down so let's talk to crash the time has come i have deciphered the messages hidden within the magical signatures their coordinates put point to a location in vahar fells you've been useful thus far for a human i don't know what we will face there go where the message instructs and the answers will be waiting there and so shall i <clears throat> the skill we get from this quest is pretty cool um We'll talk about more whenever we get it, but yeah. Pain Inverter is a pretty cool skill. A lot of the PvE only skills are pretty cool. Um, some of them not being worth their mana cost or not really having a use in general PvE. But some cool stuff. And after this, we just have Polymock left, um, actually, which should be fun. And then we can finish up this story. And then we can finally start moving on to the Guild Wars Beyond. Which we're actually... <clears throat> we've probably just passed um, a little bit over the halfway point of our journey. Probably right as we started these uh, certain quests. It's probably about halfway done with our journey. We still have a ton of factions and other content to do. Or we still have a ton of uh, Guild Wars Beyond content to do. We still have a lot of the dungeons to do, actually. I totally I totally forgot about the dungeons, but yeah, we probably have another... Even after the story is done of Eye of the North, we probably have another at least 12 episodes just to cover each dungeon. So, we actually probably are about halfway done with our journey at this point. It's been very fun. We've been appreciating everybody watching it and leaving their lovely comments. 
And what do we got to do after this? No clue. We'll figure that out. <laughs> I still have to finish recording some of the dungeons. I'd like to have a lot of them done before I get to that point and just do voiceover on them is kind of the direction I'm taking with a lot of the dungeons just because it's easier that way. But some of them are uh, a little annoying. The ones I didn't do a lot as a kid. Hopefully by some point Throne and Liberty will come out. That's the next game I'm looking forward to, Throne and Liberty. It's a Korean MMO. You might say, but wait, weren't you excited for Classic WoW? Well, listen, I learned my lesson, okay? I played it a little bit. I didn't have a lot of friends to play it with. It's not a bad experience, but it's... I realize I'm, I'm much closer to... Uh, the Black Desert Guild Wars 2 action style of MMO than I am a extremely slow paced tap target one. Not that Throne of Liberty isn't going to be also tap target, but. <clears throat> Classic WoW thing, WoW cool. The, the leveling was just frankly miserable to be completely honest with you. I know that's a lot of the game for people and I, I get why that's an enjoyable process for some people, but. As somebody who, especially in MMOs, generally likes to max out a bunch of different characters, even if I don't completely gear them for any game, at least have them. You know, like in WoW, I had all but like four of the classes at max level um, most of the time. In games like, you know, in Guild Wars, I had every class basically, except for like, well, I had all the classes I would actually play. I was a speed clearer, so some of them weren't actually used. I didn't have those classes, but I basically had every other class, um, and even doubles of some classes, just for fun. Uh, Guild Wars 2, I had everything maxed out, geared out, all that kind of stuff. Um, in games like Terra, I had a pretty large collection of characters. But anyway, the fact that it takes so long to level in the classic WoW kind of deters me, because it's like, you know... If something comes out in the next phase that makes me suddenly go, man, I'd kind of like to play a warlock, kind of then also looking at a, you know, 40-hour leveling process is not fun. It also just states that none of, none of the people I really like to play MMOs with wanted to play uh, Classic WoW, so that's, that's a big part of it, too. My friends have to want to play the game, too. So I'm not the best at making new friends. You know, I've been playing... I still hang out with the same guys that I grew up playing Guild Wars with 15 years ago. I met when I was a wee kid, so... Kind of hard to play uh, anything without them. Well, play stuff like League, like single player stuff, or stuff that's more slightly competitive that maybe they don't really want to play, but something like an MMO that's a major time investment, but is also more community driven. Kind of hard to play without the boys. Undoubtedly, this is a place to which the coordinates point the six south converge here. What that means is we basically just have to fight all six of the divinities things over again. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the entirety of this quest is you just have to fight them again. Kind of anticlimactic. They do not divulge their secrets easily. Yeah. 
But anyway, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to Throne and Liberty. It's uh, probably the next game I'm going to be playing. Not just on the channel, but just like in general. It's the next game that's coming out that I'm pretty interested in. Um, kind of a Korean MMO that's a mix of a PvE and a PvP MMO. Kind of grindy, kind of, you know. A lot of stuff to do, kind of thing. Yeah. Listen, I'm basically just looking for a black desert that didn't take six years to get good. <laughs> kind of thing. Or, you know, missing a little bit of the BS that BDO has. BDO is fun, but the definitely the, uh, the amount of time you spend doing fun stuff versus the amount of time you spend not doing fun stuff is very, 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 very high. Also, the balance and how it's kind of more of a solo game. Throne of Liberty is supposed to be more of a, you know, guild focus. At long last, a ephemeral spearmen. A whole bunch of random nonsense. A whole bunch of more random nonsense. You cannot comprehend. It's still speaking in tongues. Weird. Wait, you leave me this far only to traumatize me with further mentories and know this? If it takes till the sun sets on the final day of my creation, till the wheels of the eternal alchemy seize up and tear apart the fire of the universe, I will decipher your secrets. I'm actually going to go look at this dialogue here and see if there's a note. Where sought answers, I found only questions. There is a meaning behind these words. I memorized all that was said and will ponder it. I have not forgotten the assistance you provided. Perhaps when I find my answers, I'll see you once again at the end of the path. Here you go, air superiority. We get a random a certain benefit every time you experience for killing an enemy. Let me actually tell you what that skill does instead of that's not really, you know. So basically when this thing is up and you kill an enemy, you essentially have a percent chance to cha to trigger one of these different buffs. Um, we have all conditions removed from self, double XP gained, healed for 50 HP, gained five energy recharge all skills. So in areas where you're killing tons and tons and tons of enemies, it tends to be a pretty good skill um, as a way to just get tons of uh, energy back. I'm just checking on the wiki. Um, <clears throat> oh, here we go. I thought it did. The God's message for the Assurn is a cryptogram. It can be solved with a substitution cipher. The specific of which can be found here. The message reads, here we go. I found it. An offering to those who seek beyond the mists, beyond the dreams, on distant shores of a land unwaken, answers there lie in waiting. Interesting. No idea what it actually means, but it is cool that it does actually mean something. <laughs> Even if what it means is just more cryptic random BS. <laughs> but... That's going to be all for today. I want to thank you for coming out. I hope you have a great day. I hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.